Hey guys, this is Darren Benton again with Performance Motor Coaches out of Wolford, Texas. I have a pretty in-depth video on a 2017 Earth Roamer we took in on trade. Uh, I've owned a few Earth Roamers in the past. They've all been pre-owned. I've owned some GXVs. And of course, somebody that's following us has seen some of our four-wheel drive edition uh, show haulers as well. Uh, this particular customer traded for a large coach. Uh, he is a long time or long time uh, Earth Roamer owner. He's owned a few. He's got a new um, LTI that's being delivered, probably was delivered last week. I drove over, over to Albuquerque, picked this up, made a trade with him, uh, enjoyed being able to use it, kind of play with it. Uh, they've come a long way. Um, you know, the base box has really been relatively the same since their inception about 2003, 2004. Uh, of course, the chassis uh, have evolved quite a bit. Uh, the drivability as far as the air ride, the Continentals versus the 22.5s they ran in the past, a uh, completely different vehicle. Um, hopefully, I can get out, kind of get out and play with it a little bit uh, with the amount of interest we've had in it. Probably going to sell relatively quick. Uh, we got it all cleaned up, got it buffed, got it to Ford, got it serviced, uh, went through everything. Uh, it took us about a week and a half or so uh, to, get, to go through it. Um, I'll take this unit anywhere, it's ready to go, uh, needs nothing. Uh, the previous owner, like I said, longtime Romer owner, um, he lived in Albuquerque, also had a home in uh, Durango, used this almost as a third vehicle. So used it to go out on trails, but used it to uh, travel in his business. Uh, the nice thing is, uh, non-smoker, no pets, uh, very clean inside and out. A few little nick stings and scratches on the exterior because he did use the unit. He was not just a highway cowboy. He got out and got in the back country, you know, went north out of Durango and got out there in the back country, did use it. Um, really and truly, you know, everything uh, other than just a minor little rock chip here and there, that's really about the only thing you can uh, fault it for. Uh, everything functions properly. But we'll go ahead and jump, go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, of course, this is a 2017. This is uh, Roamer number 174. So this was the second unit of the new body style. They changed the Ford changed the body style on the 250s all the way up uh, to the 550s uh, in 2017 model year. This is the second unit. Uh, Roamer used this for a few months to kind of play with and go out. Uh, then uh, the customer from Albuquerque slash Durango. He bought it and he's been using it ever since. Um, don't know the exact mileage whenever he bought it. It's got 36 on it today. Um, the From going back to, through some of the service records, he had like 31 on it uh, back last summer. So really hasn't used it. So his initial year, he used it quite a bit. And then since then, he's, he's been busy doing other things. But uh, um, the so the horsepower on this we'll kind of jump into the chassis first so the horsepower is a little bit different than you would find on an f-250 or f-350 or even the 450 with the factory bed uh, this unit should be 330 horsepower and 750 foot pounds of torque uh, initially i was a little hesitant um, because i know the horsepower of the you know in fact i think the 2017 uh, and 18 Ford F-250s, I have 450 horsepower and like 900 foot-pounds of torque or 950 torque. Uh, really and truly, as far as horsepower-wise, it did really good. Um, of course, this is not an 85 mile an hour, 90 mile an hour machine. This is a 75 mile an hour machine. I uh, don't know the speed rating on the Continental MPTs, but I would say they're probably in that, you know, 65 to 75 mile an hour range. Uh, it was pretty windy, uh, stormy whenever I came over. Uh, so I've, I've ran the unit about 65 or 70, and it, the unit performed great. Um, you know, didn't feel like I needed to go any faster, didn't feel like I was lacking power by any means. Of course, uh, the torque shift transmission, uh, coupled with that, I mean, it does a phenomenal job, keeps you in your power band, um, and the gear ratio does uh, does a good job keeping you in the, in the power band as well. I'll kind of go through, uh, for people that don't know, um, you know, Earth Roma goes through and fabs their own bumpers. Uh, phenomenal light setup here. Uh, they have it set up nice where you can Flip your switches on and then just hit your high beams and be able to activate uh, these interior lights and then the light bar as well. So it basically, it's like it's basically like a like daylight at, out uh, at night. So it does a good job. 16.5 uh, Warren winch. So it has 16.5 uh, front and rear with wireless controllers. Um, 
Probably the, what makes this thing ride and perform the very best is the full air ride suspension. Uh, it's a selectable air ride height, so basically you got one, two, three. Uh, two is your normal ride height. One would be lowering for trees, bridges, and whatnot, and then three would be uh, additional ride clearance and such. Um, no issues there. Um, the I I ran the thing, um, you know, high, low, just to double check everything. Does good. Uh, it performs really well out on the highway in some of the curves and such. A lot of the air rides uh, are kind of slow to respond, but this did a great job responding quickly as you're going through curves and such. Of course, all the, uh, the front wheel wells are cut out a little bit for the larger um, fender wells there. Of course, Continental NPTs. Uh, wheels had a few scratches on them, so we painted the wheels. We didn't powder coat them like I would normally do, just because if you powder coated them, you'd have you'd play hell trying to get uh, the, the bead locks off of there. Uh, nice amp research steps to tuck up. Pretty cool with the graphics on it. Uh, initially, whenever I talked to the previous owner and he said blue, I thought I'm out. You know, I was I'm not a blue guy. But after seeing the pictures and the graphics on the side, uh, probably be on my top three color choices. Uh, I'm normally a white silver guy, but uh, to me it's just too stark difference between uh, having silver or white up here and then having all the black. So uh, the blue is definitely a pretty cool setup. Of course, uh, you know, we had to do a little buffing uh, on it because there were some scratches. If it would have been white or silver, you probably wouldn't have seen those scratches. But all in all, it turned out really good. No damage on either Rhino liner, uh, bed liner, or anything like that. You do have uh, an air chuck right there to be able to run uh, air up your tires, air down, air up or air, air, air down your tires there. Uh, this is a little bit longer version. I don't know exactly what year they started the little bit, a um, little bit longer version. Uh, I think they added like a foot and a half to the frame. Of course, uh, underneath I was pretty impressed. Uh, the length that they go to, the details they go to to lengthen the frame, definitely not just something thrown together. Um, everything is gusseted, cross braced. Uh, the um, all your bolts, they put a little wax on your bolts and or actually your nuts, so you can tell if they're loosening whatsoever. Uh, definitely high quality, high grade uh, facility, top to bottom. Kind of walk around. We'll, kind of, we'll kind of probably go all the way around it, and then we'll kind of jump in. Uh, like I said, this video is probably going to be close to an hour, so we'll do our best we can. A little simple three-step right there. Um, they basically use the same entry door, uh, the same uh, windows. Uh, the new LTIs went to a glass window. These, these are a dual pane, like a Lexan plastic. Uh, do a good job. Has the uh, nightshade and then your bug shade that, will, that can be split up and gone up and down. All the Ford keyless entry uh, is tied into the, uh, the, to the entry door right here. It's also tied into all the boxes back here. It's a rear kitchen. In fact, I'll go ahead and pop this open right here. Pretty cool outdoor kitchen here. Uh, a little infrared cooktop there, or grill. And just, I mean, small things. So basically everything kind of goes together. So basically you pop that dude out to be able to flip that open. There's like a little basin sink there. And then a little cooktop there. Like I said, all this stuff has been used. You know, you can see a little bit of heat stress and such on there. All goes back into place. And then, I don't know if you can see the lip right there. When you slide this over, it keeps this from opening. Slide it over. Little bins and such here. Um, like I said, these are all fully locking. Nice setup with the factory keyless entry. Little tabletop that uh, pops off here. You've got these two little guys right here that will release, and then the entire tabletop will sit down. So if you, need, so if you want to do some outdoor cooking and such. Come around to the back side. Um, Pretty similar to the bumpers uh, that I've seen in the past. Um, you know, it does have the rear winch right here, the 16.5 uh, Warren winch there. Whole storage here with a um, Earth Roamer tool set. Um, all the little billet locks for your doors are all right here. This is pretty cool, so you can kind of pan out, catch whenever. Watch down here when I open the door. Got some little steps right there. Like I said, just. A, 
a lot. The cool thing is because they built the same basic box and been dealing with Ford for so long, they can just continue to add more and more details to the units. You know, the factor of the steps. Um, if you catch this right here, there's like a little bump stop right here. So that uh, will hit right there, go into place. Uh, just a ton of details. And I'll try to go into a lot of those details, but there's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm going to miss. I just can't, um, you know, it's going to be tough for me to remember everything going through. Um, pretty cool spare tire mount. Uh, so there's a winch right there, and then there's some a little gizmo to be able to get the spare tire out. I think they've had that since its inception back in about 2003, 2004. A lot of storage here. Uh, these do, actually they do not come up and out, but you could easily pull those out if you had to, you know, some skis or something like that you wanted to throw in here. Of course you could probably get some skis in here as well. And then there's, you know, the additional racks and whatnot all the way around. Uh, pretty cool, but they put that little, uh, little axe there. These are all the wireless controls for the front, rear, and the spare tire winch right there. And they're all labeled as well. Go ahead and close this. Little contacts right here, everywhere. Close that back into place. So bike rack up on top of over here. I'll close this and then show you the little storage box here. You know, if you were insistent on putting like a small generator, you could put firewood back there. You do a small little uh, generator, basically, you know, kind of the sky's the limit as far as the storage there. Does have a receiver underneath there. However, if you were pulling a trailer, you'd, you'd have to come up with a little bit longer stinger. If you were pulling large loads, uh, you wouldn't want to do any kind of stinger receiver. So you probably need to remove those or do some kind of improvising where you tie them back to the bumper. Um, you know, it definitely could be set up, but you know, if you had a large jack or something like right right here, it might end up getting getting into that. Uh, but if you were, you know, if you had to flat tow a small car or just have like a bike rack or something like that, it really wouldn't be an issue. Nice clean underneath. Or you can kind of catch all that. Um, we underwash, we did a, a full under chassis wash on it uh, just to be able to kind of check everything out, you know, see if anything's beat up, you know, see if anything's been hacked up or anything. Um, this does have the camera underneath as well, so a trail cam, and I'll kind of show you that inside. Nice LED security lights all the way around. Does have the cartridge toilet right here. Makes it pretty handy to be able, out, out in the back country, to be able to you know, drop that in a latrine somewhere. The so they use the factory tank, which is a 40-gallon uh, Ford fuel tank back there, and then they do a transfer flow 50-gallon tank. And the way that that operates, essentially, whenever your Ford tank starts to get low, it will transfer. I think it's like five or ten gallons uh, to your to your factory tank. Of course, there's a readout up front that will let you know how much fuel you have in each tank, but it's a pretty easy system. Uh, with a diesel, you know, that's the preferred method. You know, really and truly, you don't want to be, uh, you don't want to be switching uh, the suction and the return to each, to each tank. It gets more complicated and just more problematic. Uh, your diesel exhaust fluid uh, fill is right up here, 7.2 gallons. We topped it off as soon as I got into town. A uh, little 30 amp plug right there, so that's your inlet. Um, we'll kind of talk about power uh, since we're kind of initiated that. So this particular unit um, just has a 3,000 watt power inverter. There's no generator on board. Um, the the units I've, that I've had in the past were different air conditioning system. This has two 7,000 BTU Dometic uh, slash cruise airs. Uh, I know that people have had some issues on the Dometic side. Um, I deal directly with uh, Cruise Air and uh, there's a manufacturer, there's actually a tech center up in Virginia that fills all the phone calls for Cruise Air. They're great to deal with, you can sidestep Dometic all together. Um, we did have to charge the front air conditioner, uh, was able to get all the tech specs from those guys. Uh, just basically found, a, um, found one of the fittings that wasn't tight, we were able to charge it. Uh, back on the road, no problem. Uh, the rear air uh, really did a pretty good job to keep it um, to keep it cool down. But back to the power portion of it. Um, I sat there outside whenever I picked it up, uh, ran the rear air conditioner, um, pretty minimal amount of power needed. So roughly you got about 1200 watts of solar coming in the top. 
which equates to about 60 amps um, per uh, basically per bank. So there's two banks on here. Uh, you can run one air conditioner off of, you know, even though it's a 110 air conditioner, you can run uh, one of the 7,000 BTUs off of one bank of 60 amp 12 volt solar. So pretty, pretty you know, pretty nice setup. As long as the sun's shining, uh, you can pretty much keep up battery wire, uh, battery wise. This does not have lithium ion. Um, the, it could be changed over over to the lithium, but I was pretty impressed with the with the battery capacity on here uh, to be able to sustain. Uh, of course, you know the idea with a vehicle like this is obviously not to you know, kind of stay out of hot environments. So uh, as long as all your windows are drawn and whatnot, it's going to do a pretty good job. But if, like I said, if you wanted to add in a you know a really small thousand, two thousand watt Honda generator, something really quiet, be really easy to get into that, you would need anything larger than that because of those specialized, a little bit smaller ACs. Kind of come around here, see another airport here. Let me catch that little quick disconnect and the air hose is actually back there in that tool bag. Um, these are the billet locks that I was talking about. Uh, the Ford factory keyless entry uh, right there. So basically you can lock, lock everything and then unlock it all from that pad there. Just a pretty cool stance how, how wide it is and how rugged it is as well. The uh, pretty much all Ford factory components inside, seating and such, they take the Ford uh, center console and actually cut it down a little bit uh, to be able to make it a little bit easier to flop back and forth. And then they integrate um, some of the Blue Sea uh, uh, battery monitors and then the uh, fuel monitor, and then there's a little, uh, like a little ham radio in there as well. Nice and easy to drive. It's not like driving an RV, like a big RV whatsoever. Uh, it's just like driving a large pickup truck. Uh, it turns on a dime, gets in and out of places. Um, you know, factory cruise control, uh, heated and cooled seats, does a great job. Um, you know, nice layout. Um, all your upfitter switches up top there. I don't know if you can jump back in and catch all those upfitter switches up on the overhead. Uh, that'll activate like your uh, infrared camera up front. That'll activate your rear camera, uh, your trail cam, and then some of the lights out front. In fact, if you want to go out front and kind of catch that, I will stick a key in and show you how much light you get out of the front of this guy. It's pretty, it's really, really impressive. There we go, blind view. Pretty impressive. Go ahead and turn. Uh, the tires, from talking to, talking to the previous owner and kind of my, my knowledge of the tires, those tires are typically about a 20,000 mile tire. Uh, those were those were replaced, uh, I believe it was last year. Um, so I, I would put that put that tire um, probably put that tire at 65 uh, to 70 uh, percent tread depth left on it. I'm going to come around. I don't know if you can check out that skylight over the top to be able to access the roof and just let some additional air in. I'll see if I can open up this awning just a little ways so you can check that out. A little carefree awning there. I think that's about a 16 foot awning. There's a little wind sensor in there, so if it starts moving around too much, it'll suck itself in automatically. Pretty cool LED light strip back in it as well. Pretty low profile as well, so you don't have to worry about catching trees on it and such. Um, fresh water fill right here. I missed that coming around. And then, um, actually I take that back. That's your outdoor shower. That's your fresh water fill. 85 gallons of fresh water on board, so plenty of plenty of water out in the backcountry to be able to uh, shower, kind of rough it, rough it pretty smoothly. It's a pretty cool setup. This is an outdoor uh, or a 30 amp 
uh, outputted plug right there. So if you were hanging out outside or whatever, a little bit nicer setup than just a regular flip up, um, you know, flip up uh, 110 outlet. So just, you know, it'll seal up nice whenever uh, you don't need it. Uh, and if you, you know, if you needed a little bit of more power than just, you know, like a 10 or 15 amp 110 plug, that'll get you done right there. Come inside. Uh, of course, it's this is definitely a smaller unit, uh, so it's going to be a little, maybe a little bit taxing to kind of go through and highlight everything. Um, there again, the color. Um, one of those things where it's it's a little bit it's a little bit um, it's not as stark white. Um, whenever I saw the saw the initial photos, I thought it was more of a stark white, like a whitewashed. Um, some pretty cool antiquing in it. Uh, it really looks good. It complements the exterior color. So pretty happy with everything. Just kind of go in, start in on the cabinets. Has all the quiet rides, so I'll just leave these open. There again, just lots of little details that Earth Roamer has done throughout the past decade. I mean, pretty cool stuff. Little, I don't know if you can catch that, little etched glass there, Earth Roamer etched glass. Glass set there. Of course, all your dishes and such. We'll go ahead and break into here. We'll talk about the entertainment here in a minute. So there again, cool, quiet ride. Um, cutlery set there. Nice knife set there. Storage down below. We'll have to probably turn around and catch this other cabinet here. But this is a pretty cool little pull-out pantry. And there again, you know, they just you can tell that they've learned from their mistakes. So instead of just using the standard lock right here, you kind of see they've integrated these other locks into this setup. I'm sure initially they probably had some issues with this latch breaking. Um, you know, d definitely impressed with th the fact that they continue to evolve all the time. So we'll come down here, storage here. It's all your entertainment. Uh, so there's a both surround sound. The speakers are kind of located throughout. There's a small little subwoofer there. Uh, it does have direct TV and a uh, little wine guard dish on the back of it. Uh, it does have Apple TV as well. So uh, you know, nice that nice that you have all the creature comforts of a regular RV or your home there. I'll pop this down into place. Nice all high end. Um, hardware and such all the way around. Show you the way that these windows operate right here. So this is your sunscreen and then this is your nightshade. And then you can you can run it all the way up or you can mate it in the middle either way. And the windows will they got a few positions that will lock up. Uh, and then there's two different locks right here, so you can do this right and really tough to catch But anyway, that will give you just a really small gap to be able to allow a little bit of moisture to go back and forth And you can bring it all the way in and then lock it complete But you know, nice little setup to be able to Sit up outside at night and have them open and then uh, That little channels pulled down just a little bit anyway goes into place there and open this back up just to get some more light in. The uh, couch here is a pretty cool setup. So uh, it will lay, lay out. Uh, it's all electric, so the base will... Well, I'll take that back. If I can read here. The base will come out. All leather upholstery all the way around. So basically sleeping for a small person here. And then take this loose right here. Uh, those will flip up. Um, if you need some, some additional cooking space or just workspace, you put this guy up. And both sides will do the exact same thing. I'm going to go ahead and run this base back in. Just kind of give you an example of Hey, you might be, if you were doing some cooking or just organizing and such, you, know, you could use this as an extension of your of your kitchen there. A the tabletop right here that will flip back around and back and forth. So actually almost get completely out of the way there. I think actually that flips up there. So pretty cool little armature and 
armature and such. Um, dinette back here. This is a convertible dinette. There again, if you need uh, to house, you know, a, you know, a small kiddo or just somebody that wants to kind of curl up in a ball. Um, kind of go over some of the storage here. So really nice, um, nice drawer set there. And then the inverter is actually located underneath here. So this is where I'm going to try to swap because this is this is where this is where I was impressed with Earth, Earth Roamer in the, in the past. Sorry for that loud bang. Uh, where I was impressed with Earth Roamer in the past and um, just their their wiring. So this is a 3,000 watt power inverter. Some charge relays right there to be able to turn your battery switch on and off and then be able to activate your charging uh, while you're under road. Uh, while you're underway on the road or uh, conversely whenever you're plugged in it will maintain your your uh, chassis batteries but just nice nice wiring uh, nice setup there and then even more impressive I'll go ahead and open up this we'll we'll kind of get into the business side of this here in a minute but I mean just impressive you don't you don't open up RVs and see this. You see generally a mess of wires run 10,000 different directions with all kinds of butt splices and connectors everywhere. This is truly, uh, you know, a work of art right here. Pop this back into place. And then we'll swap spots again. I apologize for flip-flopping all the way around. So the... Your main sleeping area right here, um, we won't really label the size, we'll just call the dimensions. So it's basically six foot this direction and seven foot this direction. So if you, if you were just watching TV, wanted to pop your head there, wouldn't be a problem. Um, for overnight sleeping, you put your head on either, on either space. Uh, lots of storage underneath here. There are actually, these things flop up, kind of tough to see. And there's actually uh, cushions that would go into place right here to block off your cab area. Um, I've used those um, similar type setup on some of my four-wheel drive show haulers. Uh, the cabs themselves just aren't that well insulated, and so it's nice to be able to have these little, basically just foam blocks that are covered in vinyl to be able to block off that hole and such there. Pop this down. This was definitely impressive right here. This ladder setup that they use take a little bit to pop out here but there again you know you just you could tell that that somebody used it some other type of ladder wait way too many times and said you know what I gotta come up with something really cool that's easy to get in and out that's not a regular ladder that you know requires so much work at two or three in the morning so nice set to be able to get in and out you can leave it out you can push it back in not a problem one way or the other Roll this guy back in. There's a little latch right here. Latch that into place. So back over here on the right hand side, we've got storage. Uh, this first is actually a gun safe right here. So similar to like the like a gun safe you might see underneath seats or um, like mounted to a dash. Uh, kind of difficult to see, but basically you put your fingers back there uh, to be able to open up that gun safe right there. So just more storage all the way down. Um, you know, if you were an avid, avid sportsman and had a uh, shotgun or rifle or whatever, you could easily, that would be long enough to be able to put, uh, you know, long, a long rifle there. Uh, lots of 12-volt um, uh, plug-ins everywhere to be able to charge your phone and such, your sleeping area and your eating area. Um, this uh, actually flips out uh, TV. The TV can be watched from right here. It can, be, of course, be watched in bed, uh, but nice setup here. Uh, we'll go ahead and go, because we're here, we'll kind of go into the business side of it. Um, so, the this are some of these charge relays I was talking about earlier. So, that's how to activate that. Now, turn that on and off. This is all your uh, all your 110 related uh, breakers for your air conditioners. Microwave is all, is all right here. Um, this little battery monitor will tell you how much, uh, how many voltage, uh, how much voltage, your uh, you have an either either bank of batteries either your chassis or your house um, and then I believe once you fire up um, once you get out in when well, no, I, I take that back your solar your solar charging is, is actually right there um, but just pretty easy to pretty easy to read and go through uh, 
100 amp main disconnect for all of your uh, 12 volt right here and then just individual components all the way through. Um, we'll kind of talk about while we're all kind of on the subject. Um, so they, they have one main uh, water tank that's uh, it's actually uh, right below here and so there's uh, heat pads on there and there's also a system to be able to run the to be able to circulate the water through that um, through uh, through heated water itself so you can flip a valve there as long as there's another uh, another valve that's open underneath the sink um, it will heat the water and will basically keep that uh, keep your, your fresh water tank you can you know, run it for 20 30 minutes and be able to keep uh, that water at whatever if you want to keep it at 70 80 degrees even whenever it's you know negative 20 outside it wouldn't be an issue there just be like an extension of the uh, 12 volt heat pads that are on it so as far as the uh, the additional heating on this, uh, there is an S-Bar uh, air heater. It's a little diesel fired heater, pretty simple unit. Uh, the, it will just in, out, in, or output some of the heated air uh, back there. Uh, because they're so well insulated, you know, you really don't need a lot of circulating uh, warm air in here. By the time you get two bodies in here and get all your window, you know, windows closed up, uh, it's gonna do a pretty good job even in extremely cold environments. Uh, this is your hydronic heater right here. Um, that will serve to uh, warm your domestic water as well. Uh, of course, your 3,000 watt inverter controller here. Uh, we use some of the Xantrex on the show haulers in the past, a bit more difficult to operate. Uh, they went one step further and just put a regular inverter on off switch there, which makes it really handy for people that are mechanically inclined. Somebody, you know, if you got a friend with you or a kid, you just tell them to turn the inverter on and off. They don't have to go through a sub menu here. Boom, hit that, that switch right there on and off. Of course, uh, sitting here, we could turn the inverter on and then to be able to turn your front and your rear air conditioners on uh, pretty simply there. Little fan controller right here. Um, that's pretty much the, the entire business side of that. There's some additional plugs and, um, and lights and light panels and light switches around here. Um, of course, you got windows up front, got some reading lights all the way around here as well. So I kind of come around here to the microwave and fridge uh, pretty sizable convection oven here uh, you know we get I get people that come to me and say well, why don't why don't you put a, a regular oven in a, in a, in a normal RV and that's because people really don't use the ovens anymore it's kind of a thing in the past you know the, the either people are cooking outdoors or they're using the convection at this day and age I believe this is an eight cubic foot uh, the Frigo fridge. So this is a regular uh, compressor style as opposed to the gas absorption. Does a lot better job. Uh, you can actually keep ice cream in your freezer, whereas the regular RV refrigerators, they're horrible. I mean, they'll you know you're lucky to have anything below about 32 in your freezer, and on a hot day, it's you're really going to have difficult time even keeping the uh, uh, keeping your your produce and such cold. Nice setup, easy to get to, easy to service. Uh, the only thing I've ever had to replace on these, and I've used them in different applications in the past, was just a little simple 12 volt fan on the back of that. It's like a little computer fan, so pretty easy to get to. So come back around here. Uh, your air conditioner, your, your secondary air conditioner, your rear air conditioner is right back here. Of course, uh, more exterior lighting, interior lighting. A ton of drawer bank here. All the way up and down. So a ton of drawers there kind of serve as maybe some pantry space and then maybe just you know some clothing and such a little a additional closet space this is definitely a pretty cool setup this is a little like a little wine rack wine bar uh, there again just the level of detail so you put this little pull out here to be able to open up your wine bottles you got a wipe you got a full cutter and everything like that uh, just really cool little attributes up top here they have the earth roamer wine glasses so you pull this little guy out right here and then each individual uh, glass is actually set like in a little divot and then you just take and slide that little piece in place but pull them out there again level of detail the earth roamer etched glass wine glass pop that back into place and like I said because there's a little divot for them to set into place they don't go banging around on each other. It's kind of a kind of a cool conversation piece as well. So open up the um, closet here. Little espresso machine there. 
I believe it does pull out. As long as you don't want to go to the bathroom and make espresso at the same time, there's not an issue. I don't even think this thing has been used. That I see very little, very little use on it whatsoever. But it's a pretty cool setup. Um, there is a plug back here, which is a nice setup. You know, so if you need to be able to, you know, plug a laptop in and get it out of your way, you can plug right in there. Um, the door set, and it's kind of been the same thing they've had for quite some time. The door set is actually designed to come together here, um, so you can kind of extend the bathroom itself. So I can flop this around, close this up. So this is what's considered a wet bath, um, but I'm I'm right about 200 pounds, a little over six foot tall. Um, you know, medium sized guy, bigger guy, whatever you want to say. I can get in here. Um, I can shower. A uh, little wand here, so basically I can move around. I don't you know I don't feel cramped or anything like that. I would actually prefer the wet baths, um, just because you save a fair amount of space um, and you can kind of get all your business done all at once. Um, toothbrush shower the whole nine yards uh, this is adjustable here uh, there again just more details to be able to do shampoo conditioner so you don't have all this stuff out in the way uh, nice little fan set up there essentially the way that this shower curtain is designed just kind of covers up your door here i've seen some people do some additional like change the door and do more of a sealed type gasket system but really and truly you know as long as you stick that over there and you kind of direct the water back here it's not an issue not a problem a um, little messing chest here. You can catch that. Not too big, not too small. A little clothesline that comes across here. And we'll lock into place if you got some extra towels and such. Be able to hang those guys up. And then some additional hooks and such here. But you know, I'll set that on the toilet. You know, fair amount of room all, all the way around. Uh, like I said, you'd be able to brush your teeth there. Get a little cool setup right there for your toilet paper. Um, the, you know, as far as use on the cartridge toilet, it just kind of depends upon how much, you know, you're going to the bathroom and such. But, you know, you can basically expect, you know, with two people out, uh, you know, trying to conserve, you know, roughly about a, about a week's time for that cartridge type toilet. Um, to me, my opinion, a lot better than the composting toilets. It's, you know, to me, the, the, the composting toilet is just a little too much work for me. So I'll take them, come out here lock this into place and then go ahead and open up this now that we're flip-flopped around pretty cool setup so you could do two, two trash cans or trash can recycle bin um, all your water filtration system and such is all back here uh, pretty cool uh, electric faucet there as long as it's on you basically just turn it on or off and there's an LED light on there uh, that will tell you if the water's hot and cold and there is a Pull this guy out. I don't think it ever got pulled out. Hopefully it's not too dirty. It's been used, but it's not filthy. So that will go into place. Actually, I thought that would have spanned. No, well, doesn't. I figured it would have spanned a portion of that. Um, but nice little cutting board there. We'll get that cleaned up and bleached up. But I really figured it would have gone from one side to the next. Little pouch to go in some velcro the uh, sink itself has a little macerator built in so not quite a not quite a true garbage disposal but if you have some larger pieces of food and such that fall down in there it wouldn't be a wouldn't be an issue um, we'll switch is right here to the right hand side here Lots of nice lights. I don't know if you cut all the lights underneath the cabinets and such uh, be able to accent lights at night and such. You know, pretty cool setup. I mean, as far as a, um, you know, pretty simple, uh, but just lots of little cool attributes. Uh, the, the tile backsplash, all the colors go really well, uh, interior and exterior on this coach. Uh, definitely impressive. Um, like I said, hopefully I can get out and kind of use a little bit. I'm sure there's a ton of stuff that I left behind as far as off-road capabilities and whatnot. Uh, this is just kind of a little in-depth on you know, kind of my opinion of the unit and then be able to share some of the attributes and then kind of walk around the unit for people that have inquired about it. Um, make sure you always like our videos. Um, the um, If it doesn't sell, you'll probably see me in northern New Mexico and Colorado about playing with it. Uh, if you guys have any inquiries, any questions, uh, let us know at any point in time. 
Um, we always get, we always try to come up with cool, uh, unique, different toys. Uh, maybe one thing that will set us apart from the guys at Earth Roamer is we do accept trades. So if you have any kind of RV, any kind of camper, any kind of car, if you have anything that's kind of cool and unique, we will darn sure look at it. Uh, so maybe uh, for somebody that has, uh, that wants an Earth Roamer but has to get rid of a toy, give us a call. We'll be happy to help you out. It's Performance Motor Coaches are. Uh, we're located in Wolfer, Texas. The website is PMC RV, short for Performance Motor Coaches RV. Uh, we're doing a full line of Marine as well. Lots of expansion, lots of service work here. We're actually in the service department here. Of course, some of the people have seen the videos in the past. It's always windy in West Texas, so came back here in the service department during lunch, kind of get it all cleaned up. Don't hesitate to, to give us a call. Make sure you like our videos. Go to Facebook, like us. Anything that you know can kind of help us out, we'd really appreciate it. Thanks a lot.